<clears throat> I can only imagine the scene in the boardroom when all the executives and thinkers or whatever were sitting around a table at Toyota HQ and somebody said, hey, why don't we make a crossover, a small SUV and give it the Corolla name? The seat, it must have been pandemonium, people throwing chairs and partying and, you know, the bubbly flowing all over the place. I mean, an, an easier, smarter idea for any automaker, I mean, I can't think of one. I mean, it's, it's easy to understand why. The Corolla is the best selling nameplate in all of automotive history. I forget the exact numbers, but... We're at well over 45 million Corollas sold since the mid 60s, I think. We might be itching, inching closer to 50 million at this point. And in Canada specifically, it's been the second best selling car for as long as I can remember. Yes, just being beat out by the Honda Civic for a long, long, long time too. The thing with the Corolla Cross is that it, it just makes so much sense. And it's probably the only thing that will get people to let go of their 1994 Toyota Tercel or their 1998 Toyota Corolla or give up their 2000 Toyota Echo and so on and so forth because they want to stay with the brand because the brand means reliability, efficiency and all that to them. And well, if they don't buy a Corolla, they can buy a Corolla Cross. And here it is. I mean, I'm still, I've done a weird thing with the Corolla Cross. Um, in only a couple of months, this is the third one that I drive. No, I'm not necessarily obsessed with the Corolla Cross, but I'm drawn to it because it makes so much sense. And I mean, my, my first two encounters with, were with the same XLE all-wheel drive model. And uh, kind of like the Sienna, I've wa I wanted to explore more in the product line of the same nameplate. The Sienna, I drove a bunch of versions. And now this is the second version of the Corolla Cross I drive. And it is certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, the more interesting one of the three trims available in Canada. So in the following video, we're gonna do a, a tour of this uh, very specific uh, 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross. And then we'll take it for a spin. There aren't any real big surprises there from my first brief encounter with, which was, with the Corolla Cross, which was an XLE all-wheel drive. Um, but it's worth mentioning a few things about this car. So here we go. <coughs> okay, no, I, I promise you, I'm not obsessed with the Corolla Cross, but there's just something about the fact or let me put it this way. Imagine or try and remember a conversation you may have had with a friend or your father or whatever, and they made a statement. They said something and you slapped your forehead and said, then why didn't I think of that? Well, that's essentially what this is. The Corolla Cross is something that Toyota probably should have brought out 20 some odd years ago in order to establish world automotive domination. But you know, better late than never. It's just like a slap your head moment, the Corolla Cross. It should have always been. Okay, well, visually, I mean, it's a Toyota, so it looks like a Toyota, and that means also that there's very little pizzazz and flash involved. But it's still an attractive SUV crossover. I mean, the front overhang is a little funny, to be honest. If you look at the proportions, how short it is in the back, how long it is in the front, but that's, that's to convince crossover and SUV buyers that this is a crossover and an SUV with a Corolla badge. It just so happens to be like that. I mean, the front end is so tall and squat, but it's, it's, it's all fluff, <laughs> visual fluff. But look, it kind of works. Okay, pricing in the US, $22,195. In Canada, $24,890. That's for the base L. All-wheel drive is an option on all trims. $1,300 is what it's worth in the US. $1,400 is what it's worth. In Canada, at the a very other end of the spectrum, there's the XLE, which in the US starts at 26,395. And there's one difference here. In Canada, the XLE includes all-wheel drive as standard for $33,990. Now, my model, why I'm kind of excited about this one, is that it is the smack dead in the middle, mid-trim with all-wheel drive, which in my opinion just has the best bang for the buck 
offers everything you absolutely want, nothing you don't need, and the price is right. And that price is, well, to start, $27,090 for the front wheel drive version, and this one, very much, the one you're looking at right now, $28,490. So let's just go back to the L for a second. As standard, you get a seven inch display, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, heated front seats, LED headlamps. Stepping into the LE, the stuff that you probably want, or at least I know I do, an eight inch display, it's a nice touch. 17 inch alloys over 17 inch steel wheels with hubcaps that you get in the L, yeah. Keyless entry and start, and that is that is one of the key features in my opinion, as well as a heated steering wheel, $28,490, and you get all of that. Just so you know, the XLE, well, you get JBL Auto, um, power seats, 18 inch wheels, power hatch, which is kind of nice, but that's the only feature that really matters. Oh, plus some soft text, fold leatherette seats on the inside, which can come handy if you have kids. All right, so let's just do the quick tour. So depending on if you have an all-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive, trunk volume varies slightly. But on average, you're looking at about 700 liters of trunk space. The opening is nice and wide. It's very accessible. Love the bins on the side. I'm actually using them. See, the bin on the side. Headrest, because it's just easier to set up the kids' seats that way. There isn't that much storage under here to speak of. There goes tripod. I got it. It's all good. Um, but look, that's a good sized trunk for a small crossover, definitely. Now the emphasis is a little bit on small, but it's not that small. I mean, within the confines of the Corolla Cross, you will, as I have, be able to, see, to fit two, well, fairly large baby seats. Leg room is a little bit tight for them. So you can see my daughter is dirtying the seat back there. And that's a little snug for my taller son, but you can always move the seat forward a little bit. Look, at $28,000, given the all-wheel drive and the equipment and all that, I mean, it's bland, but you know what? When you touch it, it feels just fine. It's nice material, so this is, you know what? It's okay, it's really fine. <laughs> uh, high adjustable seat, but it's all manual operated, which is fine. The seats are decently comfortable. I will admit though, that on a slightly longer run, uh, no lumbar support there. On a longer road trip, that would be, quite uncomfortable but otherwise they're plush they're not bad so let's well, there's a nice feature right there heated uh, heated windshield I got this okay nice and simple gauges as it should be this is your general readout with all the information maybe it would have been nice if it would have put it in the middle and move the speed to the other side but details things you get quickly used to eight inch display I mean it's I'm already in home menu. The menus are quick and easy to, to figure out. Uh, as I said, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, yes, navigation's uninstalled, that's fine. There you go. Um, HVAC controls. I mean, the only, if I was to make a complaint, I mean, not really, but you know, you gotta look twice maybe to make sure that you're hitting the right button. But thankfully the important stuff, heat, auto, fan speed, nice and easy. Down here is the good stuff. Yes, heated steering wheel, always fabulous to have. Heated seats, USB, storage is decent. That's a pretty good bin. Um, auto hold, that's always a nice feature. Unexpected in a vehicle like this, honestly. Cup holders, bin is good. Uh, deep door bins there. Visibility is excellent. I mean, there is nothing wrong over here and that's a nice big opening right there to see when you're turning left around a cement median. Look, this this is a good place to spend a fair amount of time in if only they had lumbar support in the seats, but uh, now is the time for the drive. The first thing to do when you get behind the wheel of a Corolla, Corolla Cross, or most, if not all, you know, mainstream modes of transportation I mean, that's not, I'm not trying to be insulting. It's just, it's just a Corolla. It's a, it's a tool to get from point A to B. Um, the first thing to do when you get behind the wheel of this car, or Toyota Matrix, for the, you know, back in the day, is you have to put yourself in the mind frame, in, within the thought process of the average, typical daily driver of one of these vehicles. And if you do that, Oops, there goes the tripod again. If you do that, 
you're not gonna do this. Essentially ring out the poor two liter engine, which produces a 169 horsepower, 6,600 RPM, and 151 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. You're not gonna do that. I mean, just to, to, to close that section of the review, if you will, um, it's not quick, the Corolla Cross, nor is it meant to be. It weighs between about 150 and 250 pounds, give or take. Uh, more than a Corolla hatchback but this vehicle does have the available all-wheel drive and it is a little bit beefier overall I mean the cabin is monstrously big compared to the one in the Corolla hatchback and the CVT well it does what a CVT does and uh, that's what it does but beyond that if we if we step away from that now because what I'm trying to say is that it's not important because it will get you where you need to go. In fact, I mean, the Corolla Cross, you might be surprised to learn, has 8.2 inches of ground clearance. Now, a lot of Subaru products, Crosstrek, Forester, and all that, have about exactly that much ground clearance. And Subaru and a lot of Subaru owners will boast about the off-road abilities. Yeah, obviously, Corolla Cross won't go off-roading, but you can you know, jump a sidewalk if you really wanted to. Not that that would be encouraged. The point is that this thing has some actual decent capabilities built in. I mean, the all-wheel drive system is a reactive type, but it does exactly what it was designed to do. And, and that's make driving around the city, getting to where you want to go, as effortless and painless as possible. Uh, and in, a, in a combined cycle, you can average just shy of 8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is, which is okay, considering this is a crossover, but compared to, say, a Corolla hatch, it's a solid liter 100 kilometers per 100 kilometers more, but that doesn't have all-wheel drive like this does. Um, so it is a little surprising, fuel consumption numbers. I was expecting better, but that's, that's the kind of twist that a Corolla badge will bring to this product. The only negative aspect, I should say. I mean, otherwise, the ride quality is, is wonderful. I mean, the 17-inch wheel, is, I don't know if you noticed, but the sidewalls are massive. I think it's a 65 series. That's insane. Uh, and when you get the all-wheel drive, you get a multi-link rear suspension setup as opposed to torsion beam. Uh, so handling, at first kind of feels a little weird. I mean, the steering is very light in the Corolla Cross and it's not designed to do anything like that. And if you do get into, say, a tight on-ramp and you're picking up speed, you know, the Corolla Cross doesn't exactly feel at home doing those shenanigans. But the thing is, the wheels or the tires will be kept on the pavement thanks to the supple suspension. And uh, thankfully as well, I mean, the brake pedal is feels great it's very responsive I mean look the Corolla Cross has if I go back to you know being just a difficult annoying auto journalist um, the CVT is the only mild sore point and that is only when you really get on the throttle this thing is slow ish so if you're gonna merge and you're in a hurry it gets a little unpleasant but honestly beyond that I won't be surprised, uh, you know, when the 2022 calendar year sales come out and the Corolla Cross has matched in its first full model year most uh, compact crossovers. I mean, it'll never beat the RAV4, I don't think. But if you compare it to any, say, uh, okay, so it might not beat the Nissan Rogue either, but Qashqai and stuff like that, it'll, it'll meet and probably beat a lot of them very quickly. And that's all to do with the fact that it's a Toyota Corolla that's been crossovered. Is there a better winning formula? I can't think of one. I mean, in that boardroom, I'd probably be the first one to jump up on a table and go, why did we think of this 20 years ago? Anyhow, that's it. I love this thing.